I, I got to ask you about these focus groups that we've been hearing about uh, in the news this week. Uh, how much involvement did you have in that? Did you sit in on those? Well, we have what we call stakeholder calls, and they range everywhere from um, specific associations to uh, Facebook Live uh, uh, presentations. And I do a lot of them. Dr. Fisher, uh, Dr. Margaret Fisher, who is a, a special advisor to us and a pediatric infectious disease a specialist, she does a lot of them. And we, uh, in any, we've done almost a thousand during this uh, pandemic. But those sound like town hall type meetings as opposed to focus groups, which is what the Times reported this week. Are you saying the purpose of these meetings was to involve stakeholders? Uh, how much of it was intended to justify or create a policy of like say, kids removing their masks in school? Yeah, it's, it's a combination. Uh, we, we have had focus groups throughout uh, the pandemic. Uh, and like I said, it's been um, with primarily stakeholders uh, to get their input, to help us make finer and better decisions to, that affect them. Um, during the surge, at the beginning of the surge, uh, we had meetings uh, with the CEOs of our hospitals. Uh, we have weekly meetings and focus groups with long-term care. Uh, the association leads and also uh, the owners and managers of long-term care. They're standing. Um, you can call them focus groups. Um, we met with funeral direct, the head of the funeral directors, when we were anticipating the surge because no. of the difficulties we had in the past. Tell us what you need. Tell us what the problems you're seeing. We also met with large uh, associations to advise them, not only are we going to see a surge, but there's a good chance 30% of your staff will be out sick. So you have to prepare to be able to carry out your essential work. These are all ongoing meetings. 